the amount of this river, <laughs> the amount of this water that's diverted into Lake Manitoba is sick. It's like two thirds of it never makes it to Winnipeg. Yeah. Never makes it to the red, which is um, a normal path. You wouldn't know there's a problem in Winnipeg right now if you didn't read the news. No. Well, the river is always in flux. I mean, some years it'll be really high and you get your flood years. Some years it'll be really low and almost like a creek. Historically in North America, river systems were the major means of traveling from one place to another. With this in mind, Twin, a Manitoba-based hypno-folk band comprised of David Fort and Brooklyn Sampson, decided to use canoes instead of cars or vans to tour paddling various river systems in North America. The first of these adventures took place in 2010 on the Assiniboine River in what they called the Assiniboine River Music Armada. That first tour included venues in Brandon, Spruce Woods Provincial Park, Long Plains First Nation, Portage the Prairie and Winnipeg. And at one point the band was forced to take refuge from a thunderstorm at the Fairholme Hutterite Call. The trip was a huge musical success for the band. Since then, they've continued to tour via canoe, playing shows along the Los Angeles, Mississippi, Sacramento, and North Saskatchewan river systems. The band has been able to seamlessly blend into the communities they visit, getting to know the local people, history, and customs, more often than not over a warm meal and a cup of freshly brewed tea. In 2014, record rains and consequent flooding in July made for unsafe river conditions, forcing the band to cancel the Brandon to Winnipeg tour. Instead, Dave and Brooklyn decided to reconnect with many of the amazing people they met along the river over the years. This is the story of Neighbours on the Assiniboine. My name is Audrey Logan. I'm a resident of uh, Winnipeg now but from Alberta and have always loved the rivers no matter where I've been. There's quite an extensive history here as of course throughout North America every river was a connection to other communities so my travels I've uh, found that it's always been the rivers that uh, kind of drew me no matter which city I've been in. There's so many plants that love the, to be along the river. Saskatoons, um, many berry fruiting uh, trees and shrubs, they will literally clean, the, clean that soil from underneath, it'll clean the water. That's kind of why I like to seed bomb a lot, <laughs> using the sunflower seed. Because you know, you cast them in the fall, they get protected for winter and yeah. they'll come up without our assistance, other than placing them where we want. Yeah. You know, That's isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Traditionally, the sunflower was used to condition the soil, to help clean the rivers help clean areas, also as markers along the way when you knew a certain type of sunflower was planted that certain groups of people were along that river. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Uh, I'm Dale Miller. I live across the river. Uh, I live on the north side. I farm grain. Uh, Mostly right now, canola and, canola and wheat. We used to s do sunflowers, oats, barley. It was very interesting growing up. I didn't have the same times. <laughs> I always had a curfew. <laughs> if it wasn't my parents, it was, uh, it was the ferry, and I had to work around that, but I adapted. I survived. <laughs> there was always kids around. There'd be kids swimming here, and playing on the ferry and somebody be camping. And rarely you see that now, but it does happen. It happens and, and people enjoy it very much here. It's, it's been a, a place that people like to stop and camp and, and it's nice to see them too. Yeah, you see the mud has drifted in here and there used to be a fairly decent road down here and that was all like level down here. We're gonna have to take it all out before. Yeah. That's since the flood? Yeah, the, yeah. well, no, since uh, just the winter when the ice went out, eh?
Well, the highway itself is the dike off the river. That's the dike. If you take a look from here, from my place, follow the dike, and then go onto the highway till you go way around. That's that. The, the, the highway itself is the dike to raise it up. Because the water was always going over years ago, because that was low there. Mm -hmm. And it goes way, yeah, way around the hoop till you come about Slukinski's. Then you're going the dike around the river again. And wasn't it a common practice to go for these quote-unquote so-called Sunday drives? You'd load the kids in yeah, the truck yeah. for the car and, and you'd take a, a spin out in the country and a lot of them would drive by the hoop and hole. Yeah. And what would they do when they drove by? All the kids would do it. They'd shout it out, just like, just like the bunch of us here. We would all hoot and holler together at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it was the Ukrainian community, but nobody called it that. Oh, we'll go down to the hoot and holler. <laughs> and this is okay. This is, the, uh, the Ukrainians bought this. The Ukrainian community bought the Curtis School and turned it into community hall, situated at the hoop and holler bend. And diversion going to the Elm River. You left Aston Mitchell where the diversion is. You just by the food. So, so it used to be a school. Yeah, that was a school. For overnight isolated showers in 10 degrees, and for Tuesday isolated showers in 15. Wednesday cloudy periods in 16, and for Thursday sunny in 21. Friday chance of thunder showers once again in 24 degrees. We have some Corey Hart on the way, some FM Gowan, Philosopher Kings, and some Rhythm on Res 101.7 FM. For me, the closest I've been to the river is when you started showing up. Never really had to deal with the river that much. Yeah, okay. You know? And you try to stay away from it? Yeah. No, uh, not on. Uh, I just don't go out and say, okay, I want to go fishing. You don't go jumping and swim? No, no. <laughs> Not this river. Because I like to stay healthy. Yeah. Probably. You know, and I'm not a great swimmer. Yeah. You know, the water will take me as fast as going. Yeah. Like I said, that's, that'll be the next time I go to the river is when you come by. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, you came, ca you camped at the river or yep. something, and then some of our people <clears throat> found you. Yep. And you didn't even come into Fairhome that year. You no, we stayed down. We, we were down at the. Down there and the next day, they, um, someone brought you some breakfast. And that was actually the year we lost yep. someone. Even if something big has happened, you don't have to take it. Well, you're all gonna die. And we're gonna die. you can help me. You can. Well, yeah, that, that was head. your big thing, your big moment was just that long trip and you were wet and tired. Yeah, yeah, well it was a big moment for me. And I, I mean I, I don't think at that point it was getting dangerous yet, but it was, it doesn't take long like like even the weather today, the rain, mm -hmm. you know you're out there and then you have to, you have to land somewhere, it, it doesn't take long before you know, you're in trouble as far as cold and wet goes, and, and then you can start making poor decisions mm -hmm. in the woods kind of thing, so. Everyone who lives on the river is a neighbor, no matter if they're just there for the summer. If you live close to the river, you are a neighbor, because the river, no matter from where it starts to where it ends, is Senegal, mm -hmm. till it goes into the ocean. So we're your neighbors. Yes. I think in the last 15, 20 years, the water has been out of control more than it ever was before. Before you could count on when the water was going down and pretty much count on when the ferry went in. Uh, but now it's, it's all so changed. The flooding, you don't know what's gonna come. You don't know how long it's gonna last. It's, it's, it's so unpredictable now. I guess you can't really see the impact right there. You have to see the bad places, and some of us haven't seen worse. Yep. 
so we just see the beauty we see right here and that's what's preventing some of us from taking as enough care of it as it should be. We were called conspiracy theorists. We were called, you know, crazy hippie kids and flower children and not taken seriously about the, the effects of water.